Alrighty guys, welcome to the second part of our hot water bottle cover. In this part, we are going to attach our pieces and we are going to complete our cover right now. Yay, very exciting. Firstly, what you will need, you will need your hot water bottle. We'll pop that over there. You won't need that for a while, but you will need it. You will need your two pieces all weaved in, perfectly weaved in, or at least weaved in. <laughs> you will need, you didn't need to be perfect because it's going to be inside, so you won't be able to see them too much. You will need this guy, your four millimeter hook. Yes, you will. And you will need your, oh, let's bring that back out, your sewing darning needle. Not for much, not now. You'll need two stitch markers. Hopefully yours truly remembers to pop them in. <laughs> you will need four buttons. Aha, very exciting. And you will need your scissors, of course. Plus, you will need your white yarn you can actually mix and match your colors for the top part and i'll explain that to you later but we'll see how we go all right in the meantime we are starting right now this very second and we are using our white thread okay you have your two fronts and you know these are the front because this is what the back looks like Ugh, yucky yeah <laughs> so your two fronts look like that when we are putting them together make sure your two colors are in sync you don't have to. If you want to do it another way, you can. If we did it like this, your orange and your pink will match up on that side. If we did it like that, your pink and your pink and your orange and your orange. It's entirely up to you where you want yours to match. I would prefer it to match like this, okay, so that I can have the exact same colours on the opposite side. Not necessary again, entirely up to you, all right? But that's how I want mine to be. So we are putting our wrong sides together. So our right sides are facing us, grabbing both pieces together. So now you're actually working on your right side, okay, of your work. So that double crochet right there, let me show you right there, oh, a little bit closer, now you can see, right there, all right. Right above it is a single crochet, that's one. Now you're going to do exactly the same to the other side because you want it to be even. So right above it, right there. Oh, if I can find it, where is it? Is it that one or is it the next one? I think it's the next one. Right there, okay? So directly above it. So you are there, all right? If that helps, if it doesn't help, try and find your, your points in the middle Take one single crochet back and you're set, all right? So grab your thread. Here's the exciting bit, guys. Oh. Okay. Now, with this part here, we're not crocheting them together in the round. I should say we're not slip stitching together in the round. We are just slip stitching along the pink side, and that's it for now, all right? So pull a loop through. Just pass your tail end forward just so you've got something to lock it into place do a chain one oh, is that too far sorry guys do a chain one okay pop your hook back in the stitch that you just worked in okay now you're slip stitching into the chain one all right pass that little tail end at the back go into your very next stitch i know white is very hard to see slip stitching through and slip stitching through to the thread on your hook you're going to do the same with your next slip stitching there are many ways you could have joined this together i find this is the most appropriate way for me okay slip stitch and slip stitch and i know a lot of people who do this part turn it around and slip stitch through the same spaces on the opposite side and it gives it this little gorgeous look um but you know you don't have to i just i'm not going to i just wanted to mention that <laughs> a friend of mine said the same thing she goes oh, i do it on both sides and i went what and so she showed me and i went oh wow that's great and you're doing the same you are slip stitching all the way across now i know where i'm going so i'm doing this but if you want to it's best to open up and find that section i'm just going straight through because I can actually feel it going straight through. All right. Now, before you continue, just have a quick look-see at the back. It's a bit hard to see with the white, but you can tell if you're going in. It starts to leave a little, kind of a little dip in there. 
and just open it up quickly and have a look see see how the join is kind of gets a little thick when you start using your water bottle it tends to stretch a little bit and it becomes flatter okay so not right now while we're making it but after a few uses you'll find that side will be a lot flatter if you did single crochets that would be a bulkier side if that is a look you are looking for by all means do some single crochets but yours truly is slip stitching all the way down all right so what i would like for you to do hold it there just so you're not watching me do it and it'll take five hours just slip stitch to roughly around that very last stitch you come to right there that's not where we're stopping but just slip stitch to there okay all right just to that last stitch at the end of your row and meet me up all righty guys here we are at the end of the row you can take your stitch marker out because that's not where we want to be anyway we want to go further into that next area right there all right so bringing that up slip stitching into the very next stitch which is the one we had the stitch marker in slip stitch into our next stitch which might be a little bit tight because you may have weaved in ends there because i've just noticed that was for me on the other side and let's see if i can find the right <laughs> a little bit tight there there it is oh, i'm sorry i might just that's better you can see better that way all right now that's the stitch where we want to go right there so we're in there do the next one right next to it like so um the next one will be there which is right above our double crochet right there all right so what that's doing and i'll explain that to you in a minute from there what you do is you pull a loop through unless you have two of these skeins you could leave that there but i would just pull the loop through give it a cut because you have another side that you need to do i know you've got two sides here all right so while we're here i'll show you what i mean by curving it i'm just going to grab the water bottle all right see what that's done is it's kind of closed it up there which is what i want okay now what we're going to do see how i've got a little tiny bit there we're going to go in the round once that's attached we're going to keep going in the round a few times one side of your curve will have the buttons on it the other side of your curve will have button holes for it and i'll show you how to do the small button holes to add for your buttons okay so i'm hoping this is making sense if we did not curve it it wouldn't sit over the water bottle which is what i wanted to do i wanted to tighten over the water bottle okay so that later when we get it all on even if we give it a good stretch it'll still we'll explain that to you later anyway all right now turn your work we're going to do the other side it doesn't matter how you do it i do prefer to do it on the same side so don't go around like that no doing it we just started here we went across here just turn your work and do exactly the same you find that last stitch right there from this cluster set right up the top you find the opposition right up the top i'm just going to make sure i've got the right one i think i have and there you go grab your thread and do exactly the same thing to this side let me just pull that thread through like so chain one remember we went back into the stitch with a slip stitch okay just the reason i do that is to give it security to make it nice and strong so it doesn't rip all right it shouldn't but you never know into your next with a slip stitch and your next and yes your next okay super easy now because you know how to do one side i'm pretty sure you can do the opposite side so if you want head off on your own this time you can get that double crochet right there okay there's your last one right there this time you can actually find the actual stitch before i got you to do it here just so that you knew what i was going to do but now you can actually find that stitch go ahead 
and complete this, get to the section, don't cut your thread and meet me there. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row. I have that one stitch left. So I'm going to pop my hook in there, pop it in the next and do the last slip stitch and I'm not going to cut my thread. Take out your stitch marker. All right, now I would like that part there to be the base of my water bottle. Now, if you've used certain colours that you wanted to be up the top, this would have been your top area and this will be your bottom area. We are now officially going to start on an area where we can add buttons and buttonholes, all right? So, question then you need to ask yourself is, do you want the buttons to be on this side or do you want to do on this side? It doesn't matter either way. For me, I'm just going to put them on one of the sides and then marry it up at the end. Okay, so let's go. Now, how many buttons do you want? I'm going to be putting four. If I do the four, they're going to be fairly close, like so. All right, so what you do here is you count your stitches from here to here. Okay, and just count them from here to here and just divide your buttons evenly into four. Okay, well, let's get the buttons out the way for a minute. So here we are putting your work to the side this way, chaining one. Now in the very same stitch, you are putting a single crochet. Two, three, four and five. This is just a rough count. One and two, skip one and two, and jumping into my third. All right, I just put two single crochets there just to help me out because we are going to measure our buttons to make sure they fit in the buttonhole. Always measure it first. All right. So what I did was I chained two, I skipped two, and I did a single crochet in my next, okay? But I think we've done two single crochets there, one and two, yep. So we need another three more. So three, four, and five. And now we're going to do buttonhole number two. One, two, skip two, jump into your third. If that's what you've done for your buttonhole, whoops. One, two, three, four, and five. Chaining one and two. This is the third buttonhole. One, two, and one in there. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Chaining one and two, skip one and two, and jump into there. All right, and now you should have one, two, three, four, roughly around five. We've got one in there, two, three, four, whoops, <laughs> get it right, Mary, and five. All right, now before we continue, I just wanted to let you know, yours truly. <laughs> forgot to put a stitch marker right here at the beginning you know I always forget where these stitch markers go all right don't stress guys if it doesn't eat, add up it doesn't matter this part doesn't matter to add up all right but you want to get it so that's the highest part of your work so that is where your stitch marker will go sorry guys I did forget my apologies all right now if you are off by one it doesn't matter okay this part does not matter now as we're going around, see this bit here? You're going to crochet over that tail end, but yours truly, because this is the outside of my work. Now you don't have to, it's not compulsory. This is just a little, every now and then I do like to give tips, and this is one of my tips. I have to use a different finger. I'm sorry about this Band-Aid, guys. I've been using it all week. I cut into the nail and the skin, and everything was going well and all healed, and then when we did our live, I did a paper cut on the same thing, <laughs> right on the same spot. All right, so now just grab your, um, here, let me get a close-up so you can see what I'm doing. See that thread? Just 
pop it up through any stitch like that and what will happen is you can crochet over that thread and then leave the rest of it in the back for you to weave in as well now yours truly for those of you joining us new you don't know this but i am very pedantic about tails always have been um and that's just me you don't have to <laughs> it's just a little tip that i like to use okay so now this is the area where it gets a tad tricky because we've got all this thickness you're going to put your single crochet just before the thickness all right then you are going to pop a single crochet right in that first bit of thickness right there okay right where you can see the space you're going to do a single crochet over it all right then you're going to jump over it in that space you can actually see the space right there and we are crocheting over that tail end with a single crochet this row or this side of your work is very basic see how i'm crocheting over the tail end again not necessary a couple of threads there pop it at the back like that and i've just split that yarn can you believe it right now the very last stitch dearie me dearie me okay uh, where am i there okay it's a little bit hard to see now guys because everything's starting to tighten up now your single crochets are going to be even harder to see pop your tail end at the back you're going to weave that in later yes you are <laughs> i'm sorry guys i know i get a little naughty in all my tutorials but honestly i am a big stickler on weaving in those ends So I'm just going to speed this process up for you a little bit until we get to our stitch marker. Okay, there's that stitch marker. We're getting there. But we've got to go over these thicknesses first, all right? So remember that big space right there? We need to single crochet in that one. All right, remember our thickness? Yes, <laughs> need a single crochet in that one. Okay, now, here's where it can get a little tricky. The stitch is there, but we actually started from there. So what we're going to do, we're not going to be single crocheting in any space. All we're going to do is slip stitch into that stitch right there, closing up shop. Okay, now, chaining one, single crocheting in the same stitch, as the one we're in this time so that naughty mary doesn't forget we're going to pop the stitch marker in there like so all right turning your work a little bit now we're going to go across the single crochet row where our oh, oh that's not right where our buttonhole was i'll just split that yarn there did you see me do that that's terrible <laughs> all right get to the buttonhole section right there see that section right there now all you're doing is Two single crochets in the buttonhole section. Single crochet in that first stitch. Now that is right there. All right. Don't miss it because that is actually a stitch. So single crochet in that stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. If you did not get five, then you've missed that stitch. That's how you remember. Now in the space, you're popping two single crochets one and two before we go on you know what we're going to do we're going to check our button because this part of the tutorial does tighten that section up and it's a little bit tight but it's still oh no that's all right it's perfect looking at when we put our button through if you were to put that button on top you would still have another row so we probably need to do another row after this one but for now just keep going one two three four five again if you don't have five you've missed that first stitch i'll show you that first stitch again in a minute two single crochets in your buttonhole and there is that first stitch it's right stuck in the corner there okay that is a stitch one 
two, three, whoops, split the yarn there, that's no good, four, and five. So there's your buttonhole, we're doing one, and two in there, and then your one, two, oh this doesn't matter anymore, three, four, but if you want to check it out, this is where it goes, five. All right, so that's that. Easy, easy? Sure is. Oh, we'll just keep going. All right, and now you just keep going in every stitch until you get to that stitch marker. All right, let's have a quick look-see. All right, oh, sorry guys about that. So continue in the round, get to that stitch marker there and meet me up. Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row, my dears, and we are nearly there for closing up the bottom area, which is going to be terrific. Alright, now there's a stitch right there in that middle there. Yes, we need to pop that in. Whoa, get that out of the way. Okay, now your next stitch is not a stitch, it is a slip stitch into <laughs> that nice tight stitch that yours truly has that I have in every tutorial I don't know that tight stitch just keeps following me around everywhere <laughs> pull a loop through and make that slip stitch all right chaining one single crochet in the same space you guessed it stitch marker <laughs> I'm learning guys I'm learning I don't like using stitch markers because I pretty much know where to put my work but not everybody knows <laughs> all right so single crochet in your next stitch very very fun row this one easy 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 easiest row out of the whole tutorial is just a row of single crochets guys do yourselves a favor finish off this row and get to this stitch marker because all you're doing is single crochets all the way across and get ready for the next step yay very exciting now Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row. I'm still doing my last couple of single crochets. Now I did say it's going to be a final row, but yours truly would like to pop something on this front row. Now it's only to cover up the other side and I'll explain that to you in a minute. So we're at the end of our row, that's our last single crochet. Pop your hook in that space right there. With a slip stitch, chaining one, just pull up the loop for a minute, take your uh, stitch marker out, don't do a Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I'm not doing well. There you go. All right, now having a look at your button holes. I think once we pop the button through, it's going to look rather tight here. I think it will, and it'll look like your button's not high enough. Okay, so either you need another row, or oh, yours truly would like to do a little fancy row. Just right as close to the middle as you can to the buttonhole in one and then just as close to the middle as the buttonhole in the other now I'm not going to make it extremely fancy it'll be very basic it'll still be a single crochets okay but once you get to that stitch marker so you pop your single crochet in your first one uh, remembering to pop your stitch marker in I'll just take that one there out for now because I haven't got another one with me Pop your stitch marker in there, yes, just in your stitch that you just made, just so you know where to pop your hook later. So single crochet in the first, and the second, third, fourth, roughly around the fifth, it doesn't matter, go into the sixth if you like. So that's there and we're right above the stitch there. So what I'm going to do is pop my single crochet in there just pull up a loop for a minute so i can take that out pop it in the next buttonhole <laughs> so that i know what we're doing and it's roughly in the middle you don't have to be perfect with this part okay it's just for looks okay so all you're doing here is single crochet one two and three we're not doing anything special we're just going back into that space with another single crochet right there and that's all it's doing it's giving you a little pico even though it's not a pico it's just a normal single crochet 
with a couple of chains in there and you're single crocheting all the way across to your very next buttonhole I think it'll look nice it'll give it a bit of a I don't know if you don't like this just go ahead and put another row of single crochet okay and there's another one take that stitch marker out and pop it in the very next buttonhole so you don't forget roughly around as close to the center as you can it doesn't have to be even in the center and now you're doing the same thing one two three single crochet in the same space okay and then single crochet across again this is an optional row otherwise just do yourself a normal single crochet row across I just think this looks amazing I love it <laughs> and you don't have to do a pico you're just doing your normal single crochet and then you're chaining one two and three and single crochet no pico nothing fancy take that stitch marker out pop it in the very next buttonhole because you don't want to miss out we'll have a look if you don't like it at the end you can take it undone and just do a row of single crochets okay but I think this looks great for me gives it a little tiny bit of character as well um, so there you go and if you want you can do the other side I wouldn't bother the other side can just be your normal single crochets right across take that undone do your one two and three and single crochet that way you know pretty much where your front is going to be you know that anyway because your buttonholes are there and single crochet all the way across let's just stop and have a look see so let's see if you were going to pop your button in there I mean look at that I think they look better now it does you pop your buttonhole in where's your buttonhole there you go so you pop your button in sorry and it sits right there in the middle right so now not only does your button look good but on top of your button looks good okay I think it looks great again optional if you don't want to just do a row of single crochet just so that we can give it that extra thickness because I didn't think it'd be thick enough all right there you go plus this particular thing right here will stop you from seeing the back of that okay and you'll know that when you see it at the end all right so continue with normal single crochets in the round until you get to here if you want to do that on this side as well you are so welcome to do that as well I wouldn't um, I would leave this side flat okay so continue in the round here if you want to do that as that just even it up together and roughly do the same thing as close as you can get it okay continue in that row finish at the end of this stitch marker and I shall meet you up get ready for the next step it's going to be great I'll meet you soon alrighty guys oh, let's get a bit closer here we are at the end of the row I've got one single crochet left right there and then I'm going to slip stitch to join in that nice tight stitch <laughs> slip stitch pull up a loop give your yarn a cut believe it or not you are finished the front well no you're not <laughs> you've got to put the buttons on yet but there you go that is what your front should look like with your tiny oh I'm sorry with your tiny little doodahs sticking right there I don't even know what you want to call those they're kind of like picots alrighty now we are going to thread our needle for our button now um, with the other buttons I have already done the other buttons just now I did a tutorial on it and it didn't work <laughs> so I'm going to do another one now the video that I did do I used double thread and I found it a little too thick and that's what I meant by it didn't work <laughs> well it did for me it's just that I had a really really thick outcome and I don't want that to be so thick for yours okay we want it to be solid enough to keep the button in place but not thick enough that you can't pop the needle through which is where I was struggling okay let's so we've got our buttons already done but just say you didn't have your buttons done I'll just do mine up just for the sake of doing them up I can get them up 
Here we go. I'm trying to do it with one hand. That'll teach me. All right. So we've got one button left. It doesn't matter how many buttons that you have left, whatever. If you're just starting the button new, all you're doing is popping. See your button hole right there? You're just popping your button. I was going to go this way, but it's probably better to go this way just to show you exactly where the button hole is. So there's your button hole. You find the middle of your button hole and you just pop your needle through. There's no knots on your yarn, so don't pop your needle all the way through, just halfway through. So just pulling it through. Might take these buttons undone. They're just confusing me a little bit now. <laughs> now this is only in the middle. So we haven't done anything yet. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave this tail end as it is because you're going to weave that in later. Trust me, it will stay in place. All right, so just find another space, tiny little stitch right next to your other stitch. Pop your needle in like so. Just holding that tail end still. Make it nice and long because you're going to need a nice long tail to weave in. Grab your button. Pop it in any little space you have. If you have a four hole button, you need to cover all four areas of your button. I'll get close for you anyway, so you can have a look see, but you need to cover all four areas of your button. So now that the button is kind of in place, try and keep in sync with the others. And the way I saw it was, let me get close up for you, was that there was two Actually, it's not too bad. Two single crochets there, two single crochets there, and the same two single crochets there. And this one, probably a little bit low. That's all. Oh, no, it's just the same. It's the way I was holding it. Okay, so find your... Let me bring that up a little bit. Find your buttonhole, like so. Pop your, your needle in that little hole, any first hole you come to. Pull it through. Don't pull it too tight because this is still not weaved in yet. So now you just find another space. Remember, I've got four spaces, so I've got to go through all four holes. Go to another space right there. Okay. Now, we're going to go another space there. Now, this is where it can get a little thick, the yarn. So it's starting to get a bit thick. Go into the side space. So we've done the top rows, and now I'm doing the sides of the button. Just being careful how it's looking in the back, okay? Being very careful. Because the back is actually the front of the back, if that makes any sense. So find another buttonhole anywhere. And then go through the last one right there. All right? Now, you don't want to be leaving any threads there. See how I haven't got any threads there on the other buttons? All you want to do is find a little space between the button and your work. Pull it through like so, and that's it. Now you're going to weave this end. It's a really big end. Sorry, guys. You're going to weave this end in and out of your buttoned area where no one can see. So just kind of go, see that? How I'm in and out of the stitch near the button? I'm just weaving that in. I know it looks like it will come undone, but it actually won't. If you just make sure you weave in quite a few times, it's like weaving in your work on your blanket. It's exactly the same thing. Oh, that's really tight. I don't know if it's going to come through. Oh, well, it did. How about that? All right. Just keep weaving in your ends. Like so. In and out of the button area. And that's done three times. That's not going to come undone. Okay. So I'm going to give it a cut. And just give it a tug and the end will hide inside the button and then you re-thread your work right here like so well, I can do it without splitting it and I didn't <laughs> oh no here we go there we go all good and you re-thread your work like so and you do exactly the same weaving in and out I might go up this way Oh, I don't know. It's all so thick in there. <laughs> so just keep weaving in and out of your buttoned area, wherever you like. 
but try to get into some sort of thickness. See that thickness right there? That's a little bit difficult for me to put the needle through. Do that anyway because you want to keep it in place. I think... <laughs> All right, there we go. Give it a cut. That was three times and there you go. Now, weave in, go ahead and do your other buttons and then weave in all your ends and then meet me back here because this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to show you quickly so you get it. I think we might have done the buttons a little bit too low, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. So that's what this row here was for, to cover up anything you might see down the bottom. Okay, so there you go. Now, let's just grab our little water bottle. So you can see, I'm just, <laughs> just shoving it in there. <laughs> All right. Now, when we do the top part and you want to take your water bottle undone, you just undo your buttons. There. Okay. So now we're going to do our top part, part in a minute once you get all your buttons done. How gorgeous does it look? Ah, oh, very nice. Huh? So now what we're going to do, head off on your own for a minute, complete these buttons, return, and let's get started on the top bit. Get ready, guys, because this is the end. Alrighty, guys, that's our button section done. We don't need to worry about that anymore until the very end. We're going to work on the top part, and I've got a little stitch marker here. I just wanted to explain something to you very quickly. Ordinarily, when I'm making water bottle covers, I would actually start my sewing from there and work my way down there then come over this side and work my way up to that stitch marker there, leaving a small section for your nozzle of the bottle. Now, the only reason I didn't do it that way is to show you the base part first, and just so that you can see that, but I probably should have done it now that I think about it. Um, so it just means we've got an extra knot to weave in, sorry guys. So what we're going to do just quickly, if you haven't already done so, I'm just going to cut that because mine's a little bit frayed there. Just grab a needle real quickly. Okay, and just... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me... Oh, I won't take that out because I need that. Oh, no, I'll take it out because I know what I'm doing. Okay, it was only going to be there for you. <laughs> All right, so let's just quickly get a close-up. Now here you would have that little knot. All you're going to do is pass... Actually, if you pass it in there, if you pass it in there later when we're slip stitching, you might pull it through, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just pass it through the stitch so that it's on the inside of your work. Okay, I want you to do the same with this side here. All right. Easy, easy. Just grab a stitch where you see it just right there and pass it on the inside okay and you're going to weave that in later you could have weaved it now it didn't matter all right so grab your hook and your thread all right so this is where let me get a nice close-up so you can see all right so this is where your last stitch was and you can see a tiny tiny little knot which we are going to hopefully hopefully cover if you give it a big tug it might work go into that stitch where we put the knot and the corresponding stitch on the other side grab your little tail end pull a loop through like so all right now pass your tail end over grab your working end chaining one but we're not going to slip stitch back in there like we did with the first when we first started because there's too much in there already so pop your tail end at the back now just slip stitch straight into the very next stitch two well actually it's classified as one really one two three four, five, six, seven, 
seven, I think it was eight from memory, I can still see the stitch marker mark, and eight, yeah that's where the stitch marker was. All right, and I'll just show you quickly what we're going to do. Pull a loop through and cut it right there. Okay. All right, now turn your work around. We're going to do the other side. Okay. Same thing there. You're going to grab your hook and you're going to pop it in where we put the thread. I think we put the thread from that side, but we're going to pop it in here. That spot right there, wherever you see the very same space that you just put your thread in or where your thread is coming out of, if that made any sense, the last one. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put it through the opposite side. And there's the opposite side right there. So popping it through your front cover to the to the back cover. Okay, so through all thicknesses, grab your tail end again, pulling that loop through. Okay, so we're just chaining one. Just go into your very next stitch, like so, and that can be classified as your first slip stitch, one. All right, now go into the next one, two. Go into your next with a three and four and five, six, whoops, there we go, split the yarn there, seven, I'm pretty sure it's eight, we did eight before on the other side, and eight, and I am correct, and there you go, now we're not going to cut this one, because this is now where we're going to start our nozzle, all right? That's exactly where you want your nozzle to go. However, before we do, everybody's stitching is different. So what I want you to do is grab your little um, water bottle. I'm just going to fold it. So it's a lot easier to fold it. I tried doing it on the, on the break before and it worked perfectly. <laughs> but when you put it in, it kind of goes in a bit oblong. <laughs> okay, so popping your nozzle through. And there you go. Yeah, it did go in a bit oblong. <laughs> there you go. All right. And there you go. Have a look at your space in there. There should be enough room for it to grow. Okay. And there is. And just from where it is sitting on your neck there, you've got like a, a finger worth between each. You could use measurements if you like. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's going to close up a little bit and then we're going to increase as we go along to make that part and it'll go right up to about there by the time we're finished all right so there you go that's perfect now if yours is too loose probably needed to have added an extra stitch there you could take your thread undone and then just add one more stitch if it's too tight doesn't really matter even if it comes up to here I think it'll be okay because when once we start adding the stitches on the edges it'll grow plus if you're using a stretchy yarn this is going to stretch okay so don't stress if it's really really tight if it's very loose you might need to add an extra stitch bring it over a bit more there and just pull that little thread through one more over here so you know it's more tight but in the meantime we are going to start oh, very exciting all right okay first thing we're going to do is chain one then we're going to work along the stitches this way now, all right? So in that same stitch, you are putting one single crochet like that. And guess what? You're not going to do a Mary and forget this part. <laughs> You're going to pop in your stitch marker, like so. All right? And you are going to do a single crochet in each stitch until you get to your stitch marker. Well, let's just get to halfway and you'll find that this next few rows will work up relatively quickly because it's a very small piece um, until we start um, increasing <laughs> then it'll take you a little bit longer <laughs> but not really long it's it's you know we're on the home stretch now guys home stretch pretty cool huh by the time this tutorial goes up 
you guys would have seen it in my Wednesdays live okay so oh, hang on here we go we're coming towards that middle I'll explain that live thing to you in a minute but in the meantime all right there's a single crochet right there right now here's the little space right here so you can see let me get a nice closer there's a stitch right there just before your thickness you are going to put a single crochet in that stitch all right now you've got that real solid thick stitch that we did our single crochet our slip stitches in you're going to pop your hook in that thickness and do a single crochet that should give it extra reinforcement then you're going to pop your hook in that space right next to it with a single crochet and then whoops let's turn it around there <laughs> sorry about that I mean to pull it out of frame there it's turning the work around I didn't want to knock the stand off by the way halfway through this tutorial here today I knocked the stand down I'm gonna pop that in one of my bloopers so you can see them they are coming up this week guys <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking what all the newbies are saying what is she talking about I'm putting together a set of bloopers of all the mistakes that I make whilst I'm recording and some I make that have nothing to do with recording but you'll see bloopers anyway <laughs> oh well recording but not tutorial recording oh dear all right we're very close and that video is coming up very soon guys by the way very close to this section right here now this is where it can get a little tricky okay so there's your single crochet before your remember that big space we had on the opposite side you are going to pop a single crochet in there now I want to pop see that space right in there with all that thick <laughs> if you can get your hook in and I just want to put a single crochet in there and then I want to slip stitch into that stitch that we did the first one that we did it's really tight there with the stitch marker in it pull that loop through let's take out that stitch marker for a minute and there you go all right now what you're going to do is chain up one single crochet in that same stitch like that grab your stitch marker again pop it in there and guess what you are doing another round of just plain single crochets two oh you don't have to count anymore this is just single crocheting in the round the only time you'll need to count is if you mess up a stitch so hopefully you don't mess up a stitch um, you can could have counted that last row we did oh I just pulled a little stitch there oh dear me could have counted that last row we did and then just made sure you stayed on those stitches all the way through ordinarily once doing something like this I would be counting but for for now it's just no point really we're just going in the round round and round and round and if you're one stitch short in this pattern it doesn't matter okay it's not going to make too much of a difference okay all right so what I want you to do is continue in this round get to the other side of the stitch marker and meet me there alrighty guys here we are at the end of the row one and two and single crochet in that last one now we're going to slip stitch right into that stitch there slip stitched in there take out your little stitch marker and you guessed it chain one single crochet in the same space grab your stitch marker All right and do yourself another round of single crochets now this is your final round of single crochets then we're going to start increasing okay so do yourself a favor continue in that manner get to that stitch marker right there and I shall meet you up all righty guys here we are at the end of the row I've got three more stitches left this time I can see that third stitch it's a bit of a tricky stitch there hiding on me how dare you <laughs> <laughs> all right there it is right there that tricky little tricky stitch right there very tight in that corner all right now we are going to slip stitch into that first stitch pulling a loop through like so chaining one take out your stitch marker 
just pull up your loop for a minute we're going to try the bottle one more time because this is you know the make or break <laughs> this is the very last time we'll be trying the bottle before the end of our um water bottle cover yay <laughs> all right oh, now if your bottle if that lid the top part there did not get through there properly and does not have a tiny little bit of space then this is too tight okay but this is perfect if yours is too loose like if it's really really loose it's got you know it's hanging over here or something then you need to take these three rows undone tighten your stitches over here remember the slip stitches we made tighten them over here and then come back and do your three rows join us to this spot right here and get ready for the increase all righty here we go here we go okay there's the increase right we're going to start right now with increasing now increasing so many people have different ways of doing it this is just one way there are others okay but for now because i want it to give it that um water bottle look where it's sticking out like that we're going to increase on the sides only okay so we are putting a single crochet in our first stitch like that we are going to pop a stitch marker in there like so there right and your next stitch will be your increase now you increase all you're doing very close up all you're doing is popping a single crochet in that next stitch right there and then you're popping another single crochet in the same stitch easy then we're going to do it again single crochet in your next stitch pop another one in there done now this where we did it was this is where you'll need your next stitch marker i will use a different color because that first stitch marker is the stitch marker you're going to slip stitch in don't confuse the both okay you could use a different color a different size whatever okay get to the middle on that side see how you've got your middle there get to the middle on this side well, if i can get it through okay find a stitch right in the middle there now when you get to that stitch one two is when you do one increase and then one two is when you do another increase so you need four stitches before that section all right so that's all you needed to do you didn't have to count exactly as long as it's pretty much centered to that single crochet that you did there to there all right as close as you can again i make it so it doesn't matter if it's one tiny millimeter out it should you shouldn't have a tiny millimeter out but it doesn't matter <laughs> all right single crocheting all the way across this row i'm sorry make it a side So there's your stitch marker one two three and four oh just did the right thing there all right now in that next one you are putting a oh no not four sorry guys you just needed two my apologies single crochet in your next i do apologize sorry and single crochet in your next all right so there's your two left not four so you're putting a single crochet in there one and a single crochet in the same stitch so you've got two in that one stitch you're going to put two in your next stitch one and two and in that stitch marker you're just putting one single crochet okay turn it around and you're doing two in the next single crochet so one single crochet and two in the same stitch and then two in your next one and two and then you are single crocheting all the way across you don't need that stitch marker now you will need it in a couple of more rows but single crochet all the way across easy this is a tricky side there's one and there's two i need to do one more there all right now in that next one i'm putting 
two single crochets one and two in the same stitch and then two in the next one and two in the same stitch and then we are slip stitching whoops into that nice tight stitch that yours truly has right there <laughs> like so take out your stitch marker and now what I want you to do is just do a single crochet I'm sorry chain one and a single crochet in the same stitch pop your stitch marker there and just a single crochet in every stitch you come to now every stitch even those extra ones that we made pop your single crochet in there it can be a little bit tight this section and if you're anything like me it's extra tight <laughs> <laughs> oh, who knows me well yeah um, all right so that's that so what I want you to do is for this row and two more after it so all together three rows single crochet in the round all the way in the round slip stitching when you get to your stitch marker do it again slip stitching do it again all right so you need to do three rounds and then meet me back here and we'll get ready for another increase all righty here we are at the end of our third row you should have quite a bit of stitching there now so you're doing a single crochet in your last few stitches one two and three now when we slip stitch to join this will be our last increase row until we're nearly finished and then we're going to do a little border row as well so we're going to pop that through there like a normal slip stitch chain one take out your stitch marker now for this increase row it's a little bit different you're going to pop your single crochet in your first stitch pop your stitch marker in there okay like that and then you're going to put a single crochet in the same stitch right there and now you're just going to put another single crochet in the next stitch and the next and the next now before you continue you're going to do the same thing you did before all right, we're going to continue along this way, so I may as well have done it this way. Grab another stitch marker, making it a different colour, so you know that all your... Well, we're going to be working on this together anyway, this side, so it doesn't really matter. But getting as close to the middle as you can, whatever middle stitch you can get to, right there. Grabbing your thread and your hook. And off you go. Get to that yellow stitch marker. Okay, here we are, here we are, getting there. All right, now, as close as you can get to that stitch marker, get all the way, not like we did before, we did two stitches before, just get all the way there. Okay, now the stitch marker is, oh gosh, look at my yarn chicken, oh, I'm so worried. <laughs> the stitch marker is kind of split a stitch there. Um, so I would say that stitch marker should have gone in there. So I'm going to pop a, in fact, I'll take that single crush, take that stitch marker out. There we go. All right. The very next stitch you go into, do one single crochet and two in the same stitch. Then turn your work and continue along the row. All right, here we go. We've got two stitches left. Keep going. One and two. Slip stitch into this stitch. I did this stitch really tight before, and I even felt myself doing it. Plus, there's another stitch in there too, so oh, that's not too bad. There we go. And pull that loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Chain one, single crochet in the same space, just one. In this row okay pop your stitch marker in right there and there you go okay a 
single crochet in your next stitch and your next and your next in the round easy all right what I would like for you to do is do this row and two more rows of just single crochet three rows altogether of single crochets and I will meet you back here Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I have one last stitch left there. We are going to slip stitch into our stitch marker. Take your stitch marker out. Okay, big row this one, chain one, single crochet in the same stitch. Pop your slip stitch, I'm sorry. Oh, I've just dropped it. Here it is, here it is. No, no, that's not it. We'll just use the yellow. I've dropped the other one. <laughs> You didn't hear that, did you? <laughs> All right, so pop your stitch marker in. Um, there's your one. Go into your second stitch. Go into your third stitch. We are now doing a border. Guys, if you don't want to do this border, you're welcome to just do a row of single crochet and that will finalise your um, hot water bottle cover. However, for the rest of us, we are chaining one, two and three. And all we're doing is a single crochet in the same stitch there single crochet one in your next second and third stitches and then you do one two three single crochet in the same space it's pretty much all it is so single crochet in your first your second and your third stitches and then you're chaining one two three single crochet in the same space it's not like a pico but almost looks like one okay so again single crochet in your first your second and your third stitches and then one two three single crochet in your space the same space okay now single crochet one two and three and you guessed it chain one two three single crochet in the same space super easy yeah so what i want you to do is continue in that manner until you get to your stitch marker and meet me up Alrighty guys, I have one, two, three, four stitches left. I have a cluster set there. That's what I'm going to call it, a little cluster set and one here. Now in the middle here somewhere, you want to put another one. If it doesn't marry up, don't stress, but don't leave a big gap like that. I would just do your one single crochet, two and three. And if you had one more to do, you could do it there. I'm happy to put my uh, little cluster set, that's what I'm calling these one two three plus a set of chains in that space there there's a single crochet there i don't need to pop in you don't need to do it here you could have done it there you could have done it on here if you want i think that's a little bit too much here all we're going to do is just slip stitch into the space if yours married up that's fine mine didn't and i don't mind pull up a loop don't cut yours yet i'm going to cut mine because mine's done because i won't have enough yarn to do anything else <laughs> <laughs> so if yours is not done you I wouldn't cut it if you want to make uh, another row and I'll tell you why in a minute if you didn't want to do this little frill row or you weren't ready to do it because yours does not fit we're going to try it to see if our little hot water bottle fits I think it does uh, I calculated that this row would be enough having said that if you wanted that extra row you should have oh look what I've done Look what I've done. Really? <laughs> they had one job, Mary. All right, here we go. We're in. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right, there. All right, I think mine is okay. I think if you had a bit more thread, see, I don't have a lot, you could have done another row of single crochets and then did your, your frilly bit. But I'm happy with that. Now, before I say I'm happy, let's do the buttons up. So you can have a look see and see exactly where we are at ta-da well there you go so there's your hot water bottle gorgeous it's actually i'll leave it like that i think it's fine 
but again if you wanted it longer if you wanted it to cover all of that do oh you might need to do another three or four rows of single crochet first and then do this border row but how look how gorgeous does the border row look I think that little border row has done wonders for our hot water bottle and look at my yarn chicken oh I probably could have got one more oh, I don't think I would have got one row of single crochet in it maybe one maybe just one but I'm happy with that length right there and in fact I actually had one row extra of single crochet that I've put in so I've done one row extra which I probably shouldn't have but it does look better that it covers the front completely I think it looks better that that's done now just quickly guys you do need to weave in all these yucky ends <laughs> but I wanted to show you just one because one looks like um, it's going to be difficult to put through and I'll show you where that is which is where we first started where was where we first started right here I can see like a tiny little gap right there and I think if you pop your your um, thread in there I'm making a mess here if you pop your thread in that little tiny space you could actually fill that space up now what you're doing is you're bringing all your threads see that space right there I'll show you what I mean this is where we first joined our work right and there's a tiny tiny little gap there it's only because that stitch was rather loose so pop your needle through that gap bring your stitch through and there you go now with this stitch here I would put your work <laughs> inside out now to do this part without pinning yourself like I nearly just did I'm doing well already doing well now the reason I'm doing this is because I want that little gap to be weaved in I think to me it's too spacey like it's too gappy I reckon it's probably not but I just it just looks gappy to me right there it almost looks like we've missed a stitch we haven't so I would just grab some thread from each side like oh, let me get close up for you all I did was I went into the stitches along the side there like that and I didn't go in the complete stitch I only went through splitting the stitch so I want to pull that up over there and don't pull it too tight just gently and you may notice it's already covered that little hole you don't need to do this I just didn't like that little gap I truly didn't so go around the other side turn your work over and go around the other way through some other stitches like that don't pull so tight just a gentle and guess what you're going back in the other way different area of course and what this is doing is that's actually filling up that little gap as well now all you need to do is weave this tail in anywhere you want up and down in any different section once and I don't know twice maybe like that now it's inside your water bottle won't be that noticeable any but anyway give it a cut and a tug and I just want to show you that spot right there so you know right there what it looks like now that we've filled it in I'm trying to hold on to it so you can see it right there it was there okay so that's all filled in now the gap you don't see it anymore all right so guess what you're going to do guys you're going to pop all these ends inside your work and then you're going to weave them in all right so there is your hot water bottle cover yay <laughs> it's complete just give it a nice flat out if you want you can wash and block not necessary not necessary but I would just for fun and just bring out this little that's better all that's got to come out of the top all right so you know what we're going to do now just for fun I'm going to pop our hot water bottle in and I just want to say thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you guys do for me if I can get this bottle in I'm trying to do it so it all marries up at the end and I can just say bye ciao for now but it's not going to work <laughs> for me is it all right so don't forget to do all those wonderful things that you do for me and join me on Wednesdays live at 4 p.m. and Saturday mornings live at 10 a.m. Melbourne Australia time to talk about your new hot water bottle cover thank you so much for watching don't forget to weave in all these ends let's just hide it we didn't see it <laughs> so to join me I'll keep doing that in every tutorial pretend like it doesn't exist but there you go <laughs> and your buttons are done up 
looks gorgeous down there so you've got that same stitch you did down here you've done up the top so it kind of looks like you um, married the whole thing up given half a chance I would have done this a little tighter I think not increased too much but it doesn't look too bad I think it looks gorgeous yes and there's your purple side that we worked on together ta-da <laughs> thank you so much for watching guys and all I want to say right now is ciao for now